we have a little over 180 degrees of areas that we can see in. If you look, here's a, a plan view. If you're looking straight down on the head. Here's nose, two eyes. The, the 180 degrees plus area of being able to see things in is counting both eyes. But perspective, we just get the one eye. <clears throat> so here's 180 degrees. And we can see even a little bit beyond that. That's pretty amazing. So we can't really focus on things that are out here at the edges. We can see movement. So, but to see what that thing is that's moving around, you'd have to turn your head to see what it is. <clears throat> we can't discern shapes that clearly out here. So we have this area here, this thing, the area that we can focus in is about two degrees. It's really small. And you could easily see that like when you're reading a book, when you're reading a book, you have like all these words and you're reading the words you are, you're focusing on each word as your eyes move across the page. You can't take the whole page and just look at that page and read it. That you're, you have only like this, this much area that you can focus in. I guess if your eyes were really good that you could take the page and put it far enough away and you could read the entire page with just if you got it inside that two degrees. So this creates a little bit of a problem for perspective because when you are reading this this page for instance you're you're looking at this word to read this word. Your center of vision is there on this word. And then when you go to the next word, now your center of vision has moved. This is the center of vision is just where you're looking. So as you're going across this page, your center of vision keeps moving. Likewise, if you're doing a portrait or figure drawing, you're looking at the head and you draw the head. If you want to draw the hands, you have to look over at the hands. You have a different center of vision. So for perspective, this two degrees becomes pretty limiting. It's just, you know, part of our physical nature that we have two degrees. We could easily, you know, if, we're, if our eyes were built differently, we could easily have a wider area that we can focus in. So that's kind of what we do in perspective. We just give ourselves a wider area than two degrees. Usually, uh, around 60 degrees works out pretty well. Beyond that, some bad things start to happen. Here's the problem with going beyond 60 degrees. So let's do another uh, plan view. We'll keep with the plan view. And here is a picture plane. And here is your station point. This is the viewer's eye. We're going to go back to just one eye. And I'm just going to put a series of uh, circles on here. And I'll put one like right in front of the viewer. And then I'm going to put one over here. I'm going to try to make them all the same size. I'll put one more over here. Okay, so if this person standing here traces these balls on the picture plane, they're going to look like this. Here's, I'm going to draw a visual pyramid. And this is how wide this ball will be. That's the size of the ball. It's back behind the picture plane, so things get smaller as they go back in space. So it is not going to be, it's going to be a little bit smaller than this one. It's going to look um, something like this but it is going to be, you are standing right in front of it and it's going to be perfectly round. This one over here, if you're tracing this one on the piece of glass, let's put a, a visual pyramid on this one. It's longer. 
it has stretched out because of course because the the visual pyramid is hitting the picture plane at its oblique angle so it's going to be looking like it's going to look something like this this ball is not going to look like a ball it's going to look um more like a an ellipse than it is a ball and then this one over here is really far away if you trace this one then whoa well, it is even more stretched out it's not going to look stretched out to this person standing here like drawing this because they, he's he's tracing circles and from standing at this point these are all looking like circles on this glass but if you walked over here someplace else and looked at the drawing of the circles that like say if there's somebody standing over here watching this person trace those circles they're not going to look like circles to them they're going to look um, like these stretched out like ellipses so we, we can even show you um what these that these will all look like circles to this person if we take this this picture and we turn it up here at an angle similar to what's going on in the drawing. So if I do this, then like this one is, uh, and with it like this, it's, it's more like now, it's, now this one's an ellipse. See that one's now a circle. When Now that one's a circle. Those are, that's how it looks to this person. So this is, this is the problem. You cannot just draw forever. You can, you can go out to about 60 degrees and then you're going to really start noticing the distortion that is gonna be happening in the drawing in kind of a bad way. So sometimes you can go a little bit beyond 60 degrees. Sometimes you have to be less than 60 degrees, but it's around in that ballpark. Things start getting distorted as soon as you leave the, the line of sight here. That's 90 degrees to this picture plane. Something over here, if I made another ball right here, right next to that one. See, it's just a little bit to the right of the original one. And when I draw lines of sight to here, it is going to be so slightly distorted. It's going to be, it hardly would be noticeable to the eye, but this one, the drawing of this circle is going to be a little distorted from this one, but they're so close to each other. Just, just that the farther out you go, the distortion continues to get worse and worse until it gets really unacceptable. And that's usually around in this 60 degree area. So this 60 degree area, this is what we call the cone of vision, the area that you can comfortably draw in most of the time. It's a pretty fuzzy line. So if we go to um, to this guy, imagine it is called the cone of vision because it's like a cone. Think of like ice cream cone. We come out here from this person's eye and we have 30, 30, and where that hits this piece of glass, the picture plane, this is our cone of vision. So you can see that the farther away this person is from this piece of glass, the bigger the cone of vision will be. It just keeps going. So the farther away you are, you can even check this out. Like it's obvious thing that the farther away you get, like if you're in a room and you're really close to a wall, you can only see a little part of the wall. You keep backing away and you can see more and more of the room. So 
so that's this is what like is happening here the farther away you can go the more of the more of things you can draw and more that you can see if you put the picture plane really close to the viewer you have a very small cone of vision so you usually um, want a larger cone of vision so in a in a drawing like setting up our diagram We kind of left it. Up, we kind of left it off here last time. We have our horizon line. This is the viewer's eye level, and it's also the edge of the Earth. And we have the center of vision. This is where the viewer is looking. Also, it is a one-point perspective vanishing point. So we have this distance between the viewer and the picture plane that's out here in three-dimensional space. And we did this last time. We, we can't draw out in three-dimensional space. So you take that distance that you want the viewer from the picture plane and you swing it down and you just draw a, hor a vertical line here. And this distance from here to here represents how far the viewer is from this piece of glass. So I can make this distance whatever I want. I'm going to go down one, two, three, four, five. Here's five inches. So there's the, the station point. The, the viewer is now five inches from the picture plane if I'm drawing out with a one-to-one -one scale. So I want to put the cone of vision in here. And likewise, this is this this cone is like a three-dimensional thing. It comes like out in three-dimensional space. So what we do is over here at the station point that we just put down here, which is there. We draw thirty degrees over to the right. 30 degrees to the left. And this is our cone of vision. This represents the, the 60 degree, 60 degrees, and where it hits the picture plane, it's gonna be exactly where you know the green one is. So that's how we establish our cone of vision. We we'll come over here, and this is where these triangles come in. This is uh, 30 degrees, this is 60 degrees, and 90 degrees, of course. And you put this here and you make 30 degrees this way. We come over here and put 30 degrees this way. And then um, compass is nice to have. You take this. a light line but this is our cone of vision this is the area that we can draw in comfortably without having to be too concerned about distortion everything right here at the center vision you draw something there that's perfect every it's from this point onward it starts getting distorted and it just keeps getting more and more and more distorted as you go away from the center vision until you get up to a place out here someplace then, you know, and it's, you know, like I said, this is a fuzzy line. It's, the fuzziness starts right here. And when you start getting out too far, which this is like a, a blinking yellow light, just a warning sign for you to like, watch out, don't go too far out here. It's not going to look good. And so just a little warning for you to not go too far away. Uh, so the distortion keeps within a minimum. So if you want a bigger cone of vision then what you do is you take this distance and just make it farther away make the viewer farther away they get a they get a you get a bigger cone of vision so that is cone of vision